Um, Mike Camby, I'll get the slide back up. I just bumped it, guys. But um, Mike is, uh, owns Mullet Man Buys Houses, Camby Housing. Um, beer. He's one of the OGs that's come to, to Pint since, I think, number one, right? Yes. Yeah. Came number one, spoke at number two or three. Uh, been friends, partners ever since on, on things, teammates, not partners, but life partners. Um, yeah, other than that, he's, fuck, he's a killer dude. Um, he's smart as hell and uh, single and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will fix my screw up that I just screwed up. There you go. Bro. All right, cool, go ahead. All right, so yeah, I'm Mike. My company is Mullet Man Buys Houses. The actual LLC name is Hamby Housing, but I use Mullet Man Buys Houses. That's my tagline for my marketing stuff. Go ahead and switch it. Uh, so here's the agenda tonight. I'm gonna give you a little bit of background of me. I'm gonna keep it quick so we can keep it the good stuff. And that's kind of how I talk anyways. I'm usually pretty direct to the point. So if, if you guys have questions, want me to go into more detail, uh, we'll do that at the end. Uh, so the main, main slide I want to talk about is private, private money versus hard money. What's the difference? Uh, and then how to find the private money, you know, how to create those relationships. We're going to go over a credibility packet, the documentation to make this all legal and legit. Um, I'm gonna pose kind of my idea for 2024 of a goal that a gold mine. I wanna kinda of try to start a like syndic syndication type thing. And then we'll go over some questions. And then at the end, I wanna see, I'm gonna ask who, he, who, who here has a deal that they're looking to raise money on and who here has money that they're looking to lend. So if you don't want to raise your hand, that's totally fine. I mean, most of my private money lenders, they like to keep to themselves anyways. Uh, so it's our job as the flippers to, to create those relationships, uh, create that trust, and then do deals together. But I'd love to connect some private money lenders with some flippers today. That, that'd be awesome if we did. All right, so here's a little bio on me. Uh, I started in 2016 in Columbus, Ohio. My first year, I was strictly a real estate agent, and I only worked with real estate investors. So I did that just to kind of cut my teeth, uh, learn about how they analyze properties. But at the end of the day, I always wanted to flip houses myself. So in 2017, I bought a We Buy Ugly Houses franchise. That's Homevestors. There's a few branches around in Pensacola. They're crushing it still. Um, and I sold my franchise in 2021 to start my own brand. I flipped over 60 houses, and that includes rehabs, rentals, assignments, kind of whatever strategy the house calls for, I, I apply. Uh, I've done 90 other transactions as a real estate agent for other clients. In uh, 2020, I moved to Pensacola. I spent about almost 10,000 a month on marketing, and that includes direct mail, online, radio. I just started nursing homes. Uh, that's gonna be interesting. Um, we do cold calling, and then I have an office manager. Uh, ten rentals, two rehabs is usually where I'm pretty consistent at. Uh, the past few months, I had about five going at at one time, but we just finished a few in the past week or so. Uh, and I still am an active real estate agent. A uh, little disclaimer about what we're talking about tonight, um, because it's all legal. I, I really am just speaking from my advice on what stuff I've done. Uh, so don't take anything what I say. I mean, consult with a, a lawyer if you're going to do deals together. I, I feel like I have to say this, so that's my disclaimer. All right, so what's the difference between private money and hard money? A lot of times when I tell people I'm looking for private money lenders, they'll introduce me to a hard money lender. And the main difference is you know, hard money lenders are institutional. Uh, they do fund, you know, the flip projects that I'm looking for. Uh, but it's not that, when I say private money, I'm, I'm just looking for that one-off person. They might have 100K cash in their bank, you know, 200K in an IRA. And that's the person I'm, I'm talking about as a private money lender. So that's where we create those relationships and, and just do a deal between us. Uh, so a hard money lender, uh, it's gonna be, you gotta meet Jay Helms here. 
W2 Cap Capital, that's who I use for my hard money lending. Uh, I love them because their money is always available. You know, it's like an endless amount of money, but uh, you know, I get a little bit better rates as far as private money goes, but it's it's very limited capital. So that's that's kind of the difference. Uh, it's good to have you know all the options because uh, if you find that deal, you know you want to get it done. So I'm just gonna co kind of compare the different private versus hard money, and then JV at, on the right side is joint venture there. So typically what I've seen in private money, I usually <laughs> offer about eight to 12% in interest. Uh, that amortizes over a year. Uh, I usually don't pay any points on that. And I promise to pay them back in nine to 12 months. Um, I, the down payment, they usually fund 100% of my deal. So it's 100% of the purchase, 100% of the rehab. Um, I pay all my interest payments at the end when I sell the property, so I don't have a monthly payment. Uh, I take the title in my name and I give them a first mortgage lien. Uh, the rehab draw system, uh, so you'll find this in, in hard money lenders, uh, they hold back the, the rehab funds until you prove that you've done the work and then they'll send out, they usually send out an appraiser, sometimes they'll take pictures and then they'll disperse the funds. Uh, with my private money lenders, I usually ask for the money up front and it just helps me with speed of process. Uh, you know, sometimes with my contractors, they live paycheck to paycheck. So I always wanna try to pay them fr every Friday. Uh, so sometimes I can be a little bit more lenient if I have the funds with me. Uh, and at that point, it's my project management skills. Do I trust this contractor enough to get the work done? or are we gonna be holding back the funds and, and sticking to those milestones? So what I've landed on recently is, you know, I only pay out on milestones, but sometimes, you know, I'll give a, pay a little bit ahead, uh, just so they're not making nothing that week. Uh, as far as appraising the house on the purchase, uh, private money, my, my people usually rely on my comps because I'm a real estate agent, they'll trust my after repair values that I give them. Uh, sometimes the sophisticated lenders, they will run their own comps, you know, if they have access to a certain app or if they have a realtor that they wanna use. And that's totally cool, we're working together on this. Uh, closing time, it's a matter of a wire transfer for private money lenders. Um, unless they need to withdraw out of their IRA, it might take, you know, three to five business days. Um, but, you know, the people I have, I usually try to keep their money working at all times. So it's a, it would, technically, it could be a matter of a couple days, but I usually give them a few weeks notice anyways. You know, when I get a property under contract, I'm going down my list of private money lenders, you know, one at a time and uh, asking if they want to fund the deal. So they usually have good enough heads up notice, they can analyze the deal and make sure they want to do it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a matter of a wire transfer to get the cash to the title company. Uh, one little tidbit and the additional info, uh, I always pay my, my private money lenders a minimum of three months. Um, it was like the first deal I ever did at, I listed it on the MLS and we, I ended up paying back my private money lender in like 15 days, it, it was absurd. And they lent me $100,000 and like technically I only owed them like $653. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't make sense. So that's why I, I always pay them a minimum of three months in case that would ever happen again. Uh, they are making a good return on their, their money. Uh, so going down hard money lenders, um, and this is a range, and keep in mind, everything is negotiable on here. Uh, but hard money lenders, I typically see somewhere between nine and 16% in interest. Usually points are about two to four. They wanna get paid back in about six to nine months. And they wanna require you to have some money in the deal. Usually about 10 to 15% on the purchase price, and then they'll do 100% of the rehab. Uh, they do require a <laughs> monthly payment. Uh, they'll let you keep the, the title in your name. 
uh, rehab draw system, we went over that. They'll either send out an inspector or let you send pictures out. Uh, a lot of times they'll do their own appraisal. They'll either hire a desktop appraiser or somebody to walk through the house and just double check what, what they're buying. Closing time, 14 days is usually what most can get it done in. Uh, I gotta brag on W2 Cap Capital, they closed one in three days for me. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, I had a private money lender lined up and then they backed out. Um, so I had to go with W2 Cap Capital and they saved the day, it was awesome. I don't wanna do that to you, Mike. <laughs> I should've said it, I should've said it. <laughs> um, so additional info, they, uh, Usually hard money lenders will have a website you can apply on their website and they're gonna run a background check on you, just make sure you have good credit, stuff like that. Uh, but like I said, when you get in tight with them, you know, it feels like you have an infinity amount of funds to, to leverage from. Joint venture, this is the, another form of private money. Uh, and I recommend this on your first deal or, or maybe your first three or something. Uh, this gets you in the game, and this would just be, instead of, you know, the private money that I have on the left, where, you know, that person is basically just a bank, a joint venture is a true partnership just on that one project. We're not joining our LLCs or anything, uh, but we are working together. So typically, I, I like my partnerships to do a net split of 50%, you know, especially depending on what you're bringing to the game, uh, neither one can do it without the other. So I love 50-50 partnerships whenever I can. Um, and so this is less structured as a, a bank loan. So there's not gonna be any points, you know, the payoff period. You know, sometimes I've seen where they'll, they'll be like, hey, if you don't get this project done in, in nine months, we, we're gonna start charging you interest on your half. Uh, so that's negotiable, I guess, but um, you know, if you're a joint venture, you're in it together, so. Down payment, usually your, your money partner will fund everything. No monthly payment. The title, ownership. I usually would suggest the, the person lending out the money to have it in their, in their name. Uh, that protects them. Um, or do both your names in there. So, rehab draw system, kinda the same. Typically, they, they're gonna be more involved. They might stop by the property or they might be good with pictures. Um, appraisal is kind of the same as private money. They, you know, you'll do your own due diligence through a realtor, CMA. Uh, closing time is simple wire transfer. Additional info, like I said, good for your first deal. That was actually the first deal I ever did uh, was a joint venture. And, uh, you know, as it, when you're first getting into flipping, you just want to prove the concept. And it's, it's a great way to do it, and I highly recommend it. Uh, an additional little tidbit, when I'm borrowing money from a private money lend, lender, I'm giving them first mortgage lien. So there is a, a state tax in Florida that they charge you. It's like 0.5% to record that, that lien. Uh, so if you had a joint venture partner that was purely cash and you don't have a mortgage lien, uh, you would not have to pay that that tax so that's a nice little savings there any questions on that before I move on yeah w2 cap capital yeah talk to Jay after yep all right so how do we find private money lender partners uh, number one, the networking meetings like this. That's pretty much, whenever I go to networking meetings, that is like my main goal. Uh, I always want to slip it in. I don't want to make it too, make it seem like I'm too aggressive on it. Uh, but when I went to Bigger Pockets conference a couple weeks ago, that was my main goal the, the whole trip. Was how do I meet people that would be willing to, to partner with me? Uh, and they gave me, that conference gave me a lot of ideas on, on how to source it. And then some of her listed here. Um, actually, one of my biggest private money lenders I met early on in my career at a networking meeting. 
And I just kind of told him, I was like, yeah, I got this deal. I don't know how to fund it. I don't think I can afford a hard money loan. And he was like, well, that's what I do. You know, he's like, I flipped houses throughout his career. Now he's got a portfolio of rentals. And now he still loves real estate. That uh, That's like the final stage of real estate investing is to be the private money lender. So, you know, he, he knows how to analyze every deal. Um, and I appreciate lenders like that because they give you a different way of looking at things. And uh, I've, I've had private money lenders say no to me on deals, even though I've made money on them, continue to make money on them. Um, for some reason, they don't like that deal. And it just makes me consider things from another point of view. So it's valuable opinions that I like. Um, bigger pockets. I, you know, if you're in real estate investing, you got to live on that website. No questions asked. Uh, and it just always slipping it in. You know, it, when I was a full time real estate agent, 75% of our business came from bigger pockets. You know, it's free marketing. Interact on the on the discussion, slide in people's DMs, and just throw the questions out there. Uh, family and friends. I put these in parentheses as unsophisticated. And uh, so consider that, you know, if you're going to pitch to family and friends that might not be in real estate, um, they might not know exactly what you're asking them to do if it's a good deal or a bad deal. They, a lot of times they lend you money just because they trust you as a person. They like your character or whatnot. Um, so consider that. You, gotta, you, you have to protect them and uh, not jeopardize their money and put them in a bad deal. Um, webinars is another way to, to find private money and this is something I might start doing. I'm thinking about doing once a month, just like pitching a deal on a webinar and see what kind of following I can get. Um, so that's something I learned from Bigger Pockets. Uh, YouTube videos, I'd like to start posting videos up on there, creating content, just whatever you're doing. Uh, I know Bradley's really good at that. Um, buyers list. So I haven't done this, but you know a lot of wholesalers, they might have you know 200 people on their buyers list to 2,000, and they'll put a deal on their buyers list and just blast it out to everybody. So chances are there's probably somebody in, on that list that knows somebody that that'll lend you money. So uh, that's a good way. Um, social media, always just posting what you're doing. Conferences, those national conferences, like I said, um, it seems like a lot of people have bigger pockets. That's what they were looking for is, you know, my bottleneck is, is funding right now. So those are the people I, I want to meet. Um, I also do this. So my, my brother, he's a, uh, he's a commercial banker and he has a lot of relationships with the business guys. And he's always trying to connect me with people with money. And when he does, and we close a deal, I pay him 1% of the loan. So it's been a good little side income for him. Uh, we just closed a $250,000 loan. So I paid him $2,500 you know, for that, that loan. So he's kind of my agent working for me and it, it's been a nice, nice resource. So, <clears throat> Like I said, you gotta build trust with these with these people that you're meeting. And this is like the real estate investor version of a resume, is the credibility packet. So basically, you can do this in, in two different ways, Excel or PDF. I started with PDF, and basically I took a lot of time. It, like, on the right side, that's one flip I did, and it went on for another 20 pages. Uh, so I ended up transferring it to Excel, and it's just a little bit more to the point. Um, so you can do a PDF or Excel. Um, and then on the left here, I always have a cover page on my credibility packet. So this is kind of the basics of who I am, how long I've been in business, my experience, the highlights. Kind of that first, first slide of the PowerPoint I showed you. Uh, I also on my cover page I put how much I spend in marketing, you know maybe my cost per contract, just to show that I am a legitimate business and, and who I am. 
Um, also, private money lenders may want to walk through your job sites. And this is, I, I love doing this because it shows me that, you know, they're interested and they want to learn more about me and they're being smart with their money. Um, and we build that relationship on that. They're kind of interviewing me at that time. Uh, so I can say, hey, this was my budget on this project. We ran into this problem, this. This is the final budget. Uh, but how cool is this project, you know? Or I can show them MLS of closings I've done and, and gain that trust that way. So I, I definitely suggest to do the, those job site walkthroughs. Uh, this is the Excel version of, of the same thing. So pretty much I just have a one line item for every flip and kind of the gross margins. And then on the right side, I have all my marketing expenses. So it just, it just condenses everything into one page. And I think it's, it's just easier to read. So whatever your preference is, uh, this is something I always send in my new relationships in, in private money lenders. After the first deal, um, you know, you can kind of go straight back to talking business, but uh, the first one to gain that trust, this is really important. All right, so let's get over the documentation. So how I protect my private money lenders, if I were to default or not hold up my end of the bargain, I give them first mortgage lien. Uh, and this, they are basically the bank. And it gets recorded at closing by the title company. Everything's legitimate. So I had uh, my mentor, a mentor I should say, in my first year or two gave me this template. And it's really simple stuff. It's two to three pages and it just gets down to the nitty gritty. I mean, it's not no 40 page mortgage that's gonna confuse everybody. Um, you know, what are we talking about here? It's, it's the property, you know, how much is, is being borrowed and when we're paying back. And then what happens in default. So uh, we get that notarized and recorded with the county at the time of closing. Uh, and then the note, this is the other part, the other half. It, this details the mortgage. So it'll go into more detail of how much interest I'm paying, when are interest payments due, and um, stuff like that. So this actually doesn't need to be recorded, but I personally, I just record them, get it notarized, and that way there's just no confusion of like, hey, I lost this document, what did we agree upon? It's already on the, the county records and anybody can look it up. And, and by the way, if you look up any of the flips I've done, you can find these documents on the, the county recorder's office. So um, I think part of that disclaimer, I'm, I'm not gonna send you my mortgage, but you can grab it on, online. <laughs> uh, go back to, yeah, the mortgage. One thing I was thinking about that I left out of here is typically I've always done one person, one person as the private money lender has 100% of the mortgage lien. Um, but one of one of my big private money lenders, he started doing this a year or two ago, where he brings in 20% of the deal, and then he has another person fund 80%. And the way he writes his mortgages is it's still one mortgage. He owns 20%. The other person owns 80% of the first mortgage, uh, but he's able to leverage his money, do more deals, and um, and then everybody still has that safety net of being in the first mortgage lane. So it, it made me think, you know, a lot of times people ask me like, hey, I have 25K, can I invest with you? And I've always said, no, I, I can't, you know, I need like 100K to do a, a project, but it had me thinking, like, if I had four people at 25K, you know, we could start doing some business, putting everybody together. Uh, everybody's in first mortgage lien. So that, that's a way around that. Uh, and then, by the way, your notes can be different per lender. So, like, that guy that does 20% of my mortgages, um, he gets paid a higher interest rate. He has another fee because he brokered the deal, essentially, for his other people. Uh, so it's just another way for him to make money and I, I'm happy to pay it. You know, it's, it multiplied his million dollars to what? 5 million. So, you know, it, it's good to have a partner like that. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right. So this is my, my goal for 2024. 
and I, I'm trying to navigate the, the legalities of it, but I just kind of wanted to throw out there if, if anybody has an idea or has done this before to, to teach me or something. Uh, I'd like to, like to get people together and get like a million dollars as kind of a syndicate of just funds that we could access to, to buy flips. I feel like my deal flow is pretty steady, usually buying about one to two houses a month. Uh, but I foresee my bottleneck is the funding. So, you know, with, with private money lending, like I said, there's, I usually don't do a down payment. I don't have interest payments. So it's really just the deals that I need more of. You know, if I was going hard money um, and I had to do 10% of every deal and I have, you know, 1% of the mortgage every month at 10 deals, you know, I'm paying out 20 grand, 30 grand in interest a month. Uh, so I gotta have a lot of capital to back me up. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, that's my goal for 2024 is to figure out kind of a, a syndicate fund. And um, this is kind of my idea is that for, pay four to five percent interest at all times. Uh, but it, when we invest your money, then it goes up to eight to 10 percent interest. Um, so that's, that's what I'm kicking around and trying to figure it out. All right, move on. All right, any other questions? That's all I got for you. Yeah. So is what you were describing in a previous slide like pretty much your own REIT, like real estate investment fund? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, but just putting the questions out there. And yeah, that's why I love to just have that fund available. And it, it, then I just need to focus on buying houses. You know? What would be the frequency of the 4 to 5%? Um, like I said, it, I buy about Ooh. one to two houses a month. So <laughs> if each house is 200,000, you know, I need to start doing more deals if I had a million dollars. So, okay. yeah, but the, the four to 5% would be paid at all times. So I feel like that's kind of matching a CD investment. You're doing like a month worth. Yeah. And then, uh, when we do invest into a flip, then it ranks up and that's where you're getting that reward. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Of the ones of the ones that you have successfully done, were there any that you decided up front or after the fact that weren't a good deal and you're gonna withdraw from it for whatever reason? Well, like houses I put under contract? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever backed out of a contract. Um, I usually I mean the discounts are pretty pretty low and then I can't really think of one right now that I've backed out of. Yeah. Because you'll just wholesale now. Like if you don't, if you don't buy them, right? If I could, I just had one two weeks ago. I couldn't raise the funds on, so I whole, wholesaled it. I made money on it, but you know I couldn't buy it myself. Yeah. That's not your normal. Yeah. I typically try to fix and flip. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Where do you get your hair cut? <laughs> My name's Ash. It took me two years to find somebody to cut it, but uh, she's awesome. Yeah. Is that back permed or is that natural? <laughs> All right, thanks, y'all.